G'day mates, welcome to another super fun and educational Sleep HQ case study. David is a valued member on the CPAP Reviews Facebook community. G'day Davo. And like many CPAP users who frequently travel, he has two machines. For therapy at home, he uses a ResMed AirSense 10 Auto Set, but he also has a recently recalled Phyllis Respironics Dream Station Go Auto that he bought a couple of weeks prior to the recall. Poor old Dave. Now let's compare David's results on both devices and spoiler alert, if you're currently using a Philips device and wish to continue, perhaps skip to the next video. All right, let's do it. Here we are on the dashboard at Sleep HQ, and for those tuning in for the very first time, warm welcome to the channel. My name's Nick, but everyone just calls me Uncle Nico. Don't ask me why. I know it's a little creepy, but the shoe definitely fits. Now, Sleep HQ is my CPAP data reporting and analysis platform. You can upload your CPAP data directly to the Sleep HQ cloud, and then you can monitor your therapy and make changes if required. And it's free. So go check it out, sleephq.com. And here we are on David's profile. And thanks to David for sharing his profile with us today. Dave, I'll send you a little hat just to say thanks. So you can see here, David's got an AirSense 10 auto set, like I showed you before, and the Dream Station Go Auto, two automatic devices. But as you're about to find out, just because they're both automatic, doesn't mean the performance and the results are the same. So on the Dream Station, David's apnea hypopnea index up here in green is 39.1. Ouch, 39 times an hour. He's having breathing difficulty. And on the AHI donut here, we can see the majority of events are obstructive apneas, 32.87, which is also bad news for Dave because obstructive events are the most severe classification of apnea. They're the most dangerous. And here's his machine settings. Currently in mode automatic, he's got a pressure min of five and a pressure max of 20. So the automatic machine will vary the pressure automatically within that pressure range. It won't go below five and it can't go above 20. 20 is the max on most CPAP machines anyway. So what's going on? <laughs> Why is that AHI so damn high? As it currently stands, old mate Dave, he's still classified as having severe obstructive sleep apnea, even though he's using a Dream Station Auto CPAP device. It's just not good enough. Let's scroll down and check out Dave's breathing and let's see how the Philips Auto algorithm is changing the pressure in response to Dave's obstructive events. Here we go. So this section right here, the flow rate, is Dave's breathing. Every breath he takes, we can see in high definition on Sleep HQ, which is really cool. And just above it, we have the pressure changes. This is the automatic algorithm changing the pressure over time in response to what's happening on the flow rate. And every manufacturer has their own specific, unique auto algorithm, their own formula that they use to determine the pressure changes. Let's zoom in and see this in action. Let's see what's going on. I'm just clicking and dragging my mouse here so we can zoom right in and we can see Dave's breathing and we can see what's happening with the pressure. So all these little yellow bars here are the obstructive events and you can see them really clearly. So this is Dave breathing in, out, in, out. He's taking big, deep breaths. And then all of a sudden, look. <gasps> this right here is just textbook obstructive apnea. As clear as an example as I could possibly give you. Now let's have a look at what the pressure is doing in response to this textbook obstructive apnea. Starts off 10.6 and you can see it gradually moves up to 11.6, it's doing the right thing. He's still obstructive, goes up again to 12.6. It's trending up, which is what you want because the idea is currently there is no air getting into Dave's lungs. So the pressure needs to increase to force air in. That's how it works. All right, it pauses for a little bit here and then it goes up again to 13.6. But, but have a look, this is where it gets really confusing he's clearly still obstructive. The machine knows it. The machine is flagging these events, obstructive apneas, but the pressure goes from 13.6 
down to 11.6. Now let's scroll forward here. Look how long the pressure now stays at 11.6. I'm gonna zoom out a bit. So this is where the pressure dropped from 13.6 to 11.6 at 620. And it stayed at 11.6 right up until this point here, 636 for 16 minutes. It stayed at the same pressure, but have a look at the breathing during that time. Clear obstructive events and the pressure stayed the same for 16 minutes. All right, let's zoom out again and go to this next section again. All right, it's a similar story again. All right, so 636, the pressure starts to go up again, goes up to 12.6, then it goes up to 13.6, and now it's at 14.6. So it's gone up another centimeter from where it was previously, but once again, it drops back down to 12.6. It drops back down to again, and this time, let's have a look. 641 all the way to 658, 17 minutes. It stayed at 12.6. And let's have a look at the breathing again. Clear obstructive apneas. There is no reason that auto algorithm should be staying at the same pressure for 17 minutes when breathing looks like this. Zoom out a little bit again. All right, now, once again, the pressure goes up. Let's have a look. So the pressure trends up again. All right, it's finally figured out. Yep, we're still not controlled. We need more air. 13.6 up to 14.6 and finally gets to 15.6. Okay, that's where it's got to and it does its drop again. Now this time, I'll show you what happens this time. This time, the pressure just slopes down over a really long period of time. But what is that? So let's have a look from there to here. Okay, so the pressure's at 13.6 and it just gradually comes all the way down to 10.6. But once again, there's just apneas as far as the eye can see. For, for some reason, and perhaps it's because there was those couple of false central apnea flags in the mix. The machines decided that no more pressure is required when there is a lot more pressure required. Lots, lots more. Now it comes down to this point here where it flatlines. Let's zoom in on there. And what happens here, <laughs> eventually, um, Dave has an obstructive event here. They've false flagged at a central event. It's not, it's obstructive. And then he wakes up. And that's what happens. The pressure's come back down. He's having too many obstructive events. He's probably woken up to go to the toilet. Maybe he's done a big and just woken up out of sleep. Okay, so that's what's happened here. He's woken up and he's, and he's restarted the, the machine again at five centimeters. That's where it starts. So the big problem, the big problem I have with the Phillips algorithm right here is it's taking way too long to increase the pressure and treat those sleep apnea events. And I'll show you how ResMed does it in a second, which is 10 times better. I, I don't have an issue personally with them doing this little step up, step up, step up, and then step down to make sure that they're not inducing central apnea. However, you can't, you know, in this little section here, there is no central apnea flag. So you can't keep the pressure at the same low rate with all this obstructive apnea happening for 15 minutes. Not on, that's rubbish. This isn't some sort of really complex case with lots of central apnea, mixed apnea, high leak rates, mouth leak rates, where the automatic algorithm can't figure out what's going on. This is just clear textbook obstructive sleep apnea and it knows it. It's flagging, look, it's flagging OA. The machine knows it's obstructive sleep apnea, but look, the pressure. It's not changing. It's not changing at all. And now let's take a look at Dave's ResMed results. So here we are guys, same profile. All I've done here is switched from the Dream Station to Dave's AirSense 10. And we're now looking at Sunday, March 28th with the Dream Station. It was one day prior, Saturday, March 27th. And have a look 
at the dramatic improvement in the AHI. 4.49 on the Air Sense 10 versus 39.1 on the Dream Station Go, only one day prior. Now let's scroll down and check out Dave's breathing, but more importantly, how is ResMed doing things differently to get Dave these fantastic results? Let's check out the ResMed algorithm and how it's changing the pressure. And it's just fascinating to see, it really is. Now you might recall with the Dream Station Go, we had all those yellow flags, those obstructive apnea events, and then the pressure was gradually stepping up and then it would drop down and stay flatline for 15 minutes and then it'd step up again and repeat. Have a look at how different this is right here. Look at Dave's breathing here. There's no flags at all, but look at the pressure change. It's already moving up. Look at it go. I mean, it's moving very fast. It flatlines for a little bit here, and then we get this one hypopnea flag, and then it really ramps up the pressure quite quickly, and it goes up to 15.76. So it's gone from five to 15.76 in a matter of nine minutes. <laughs> nine minutes, incredible. It's like the ResMed device is ahead of the curve. It's increasing the pressure prior to those obstructive events happening. It's preventing them from happening. All right, now let's zoom out and see what else we've got here. Here's another great example. So here we have those yellow flags again, the obstructive apnea flags, like we saw with the DreamStation data. But look at the pressure change this time around. Look how quickly it gets up to 14.92 to even out the breathing. It's 15 minutes. With the Dream Station before, it would take an hour and we'd have another 50 of these obstructive apnea events before it reached adequate pressure because it goes up a couple of notches, then it comes down, and then it flatlines, and it goes up a couple of notches. Whereas this, there is no need for the pressure to drop down because the airway is clearly obstructed. They're not central apneas, they're flagging the apneas correctly, so there's no need for that pressure to come down unless the breathing stabilizes. If the breathing stabilizes, then it can gradually come down because you don't want it to be up at a really high rate all the time. Fascinating. Dave also wears a REM sleep O2 ring each night to monitor his blood oxygen levels and heart rate. And here's the results on the left over here. We have the Dream Station results and they're terrible. Have a look at his blood oxygen levels dropping all the way down to 70%. This is because he's having so many obstructive events that there's not enough air getting into his lungs. And have a look at the difference in the ResMed results. Blood oxygen levels nice and stable, rarely dipping below 90. It just goes to show how important it is to treat those obstructive apneas nice and quick Get them sorted, get your breathing nice and stable so you don't end up with blood oxygen levels looking like this, which is gonna put a whole lot of stress on your heart and cause disturbed sleep. And here's the bottom line. The ResMed Auto Algorithm is far superior to the Philips one. And there's a lot of scientific literature to back up my claims. Now, I know the last couple of years have been very, very difficult for Philips users with all the foam gate stuff. And I know there's a number of you out there that have no choice. You're stuck with Philips and that's just the way it is and that sucks. For those of you that are stuck with Philips, I highly recommend changing your mode, your therapy mode from automatic mode to fixed pressure mode. I, I don't think the auto algorithm is up to scratch. It leaves a lot to be desired from the evidence I'm seeing and the evidence I'm reading. There's some great links in the description of the video. I highly recommend you check them out but I'd switch to CPAP mode. Find a good set level of pressure that controls your apnea. Maybe get an O2 ring as well and make sure that your blood oxygen levels are nice and stable. I also know there's a large number of Philips users that do have a choice, but for whatever reason, too lazy, can't be bothered, don't wanna spend the money, you're sticking with Philips. And hopefully after seeing some of these results that I'm showing you, which are honest, this is real data guys, real users, you wake up and go, yeah, okay, one thing to have toxic foam and to be poisoning me night after night, but two, to not be working well, and that's what it's about. Uncontrolled sleep apnea, these blood oxygen levels are far more dangerous than any toxic foam, I can tell you that much. Until next time, guys, sleep well, look after your mates, 
and I'll see you soon. And if you can afford it, go and get yourself a new CPAP machine and put that shit in the bin. If they're having apnea, the pressure goes up. If the breathing's stable, the pressure... Uh, why can't I fucking figure it out? I'm such a piece of shit.